G'day, Jeff Lewis here from Seriously Series and welcome to another workshop update video. We've got a big trip coming up in August of this year and a lot of work's been going on here in the Landy Cave. As you can see, the Series 3 is in pieces, which is pretty common, but anyway, there's a method to the madness. The Parenti's gone missing and what's going on there? Well, I'm going to let you in on a few little secrets in the following video and I'll touch on this big trip that we've got planned in August of this year and how you can find out more about it. So if this sounds like a video that's of interest to you then you know what to do. Stay tuned. <coughs> So the Series 3 always seems to be going underneath the knife on these videos. Seems a bit odd, but basically with a Land Rover of this nature, the, the work never ends. The reason is, is that oh, I guess I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I'm always trying to refine it and make it that little bit better. And I guess I'm a bit fussy too, because there's always something that's sort of not quite right. We've got a big trip coming up in August of this year, as I mentioned, and we're going to be doing probably close to maybe about three to five thousand kilometres in very remote in a very remote part of Australia. Because of that, and with what hap has happened on previous trips, I want to make sure that the Land Rover is absolutely 110% ready for the trip itself. That means that we've actually installed a fully rebuilt and refurbished engine from Galloway Engines, which I've talked about in previous uh, servicing your 4x4 episodes. And if you haven't seen the playlist or the series of videos uh, servicing your 4x4, check it out. It's well worth having a look at. So that's finally, I've put it back into the actual Series 3 itself. I've spent the last couple of weeks basically just getting all the parts correct and right for the motor itself also making sure that the motor is tuned correctly and obviously the distributor in the actual motor itself has been modified to actually suit the camshaft and carburetor that's actually going on it which as many of you know from a previous video which i talked about with the hnj engineering uh, adaption kit it's fitted with a hif 44 su carburetor the camshaft in it is out of a 200 tdi or a later variant of the uh, two and a quarter litre petrol engine which had a nine to one compression ratio. So this will just give it not a huge amount more but just, just a pinch more power. So the distributor itself has been recurved to obviously suit those parameters. I've then obviously had to fit the water pump of the old motor because really it hadn't done any miles at all. Um, and this I obviously modified to fit a larger fan on it and a viscous coupling to make the, the vehicle more capable in uh, hot climactic conditions, which is pretty typical out here in outback Western Australia. Now, because we took the motor out, or I took the motor out, I should say, um, I thought it'd be a perfect opportunity to do some work on the transmission. So the transmission is down there on the floor and the gearbox and transfer case have been pulled apart and basically uh, what I'm attempting to do there is remedy the problem of obviously oil in the transfer case getting pumped into the gearbox and also there was a few gaskets that were leaking or should I say weeping and if you're going to this much trouble with the vehicle you might as well take a little bit more time and actually do it right and just get everything absolutely 100% spot on. So that's, that's sort of really um, what's been going on here and it rolls off the tongue so easily. But that's not the end of it. I'm waiting on parts for the transmission but once the transmission is all back together um, and I've, I've got plenty of gaskets for it, so it's just seals that I'm waiting on, uh, I'll then be able to chuck that back into the Series 3. I've then also got a brand new tank that was uh, fabricated here in Kalgoorlie uh, to go in on the passenger side. Oh. <coughs> to go 
go in on the passenger side, the reason being that the 16 gallon fuel tank on that side uh, is a second hand tank and it's just basically it's just looking a little bit sad. So that's going to go in there. Um, I've primed it up, I've got to do another coat of primer, paint it and then chuck it in. The rear of the vehicle, I'm going to get some custom made springs made up for the rear. Um, the reason being, and some of you might find this a little bit odd, but the standard spring sets that you actually get in the short wheelbase, uh, or for a short wheelbase, are an 88 inch these days. Uh, really just don't cut the mustard. Uh, I tried a UK brand which I, I don't think it was called GME, but it was something along those lines and they just were just no good at all. Um, so I'm actually going to use some springs out of a long wheel base, uh, 109 inch, which you can actually fit quite happily into an 88 inch. Um, it helps to obviously just raise the vehicle a little bit more and this works for us particularly on these longer chip, uh, trips and voyages because we are actually having to carry um, a bit more in the back. Now some of you might think well that's overloading the vehicle but you know it's, it's just what you have to do when you've got big distances to cover um, what do you do? You know, these, the chassis of this vehicle really isn't any different apart from it being slightly shorter than the 109 inch and that's got a half a ton payload so you know um, and I've always run heavy duty springs in the rear of these vehicles and they work really really well it's more so also because if you have heavy duty springs in it you've obviously got a greater amount of height then when you put your load in which is about a quarter of a tonne it'll actually sit down obviously a bit but not too much so that the actual high profile of the slightly larger wheels actually rubs up against the body itself and then obviously incurs damage on the body. So that'll be going on in there. We'll be upgrading the dual battery system too because that was a bit of a rush job for the canning stock route and inside where we've got the draw system uh, that's going to be changed too. I'm going to look at actually attempting to do um, a aluminium sort of I guess platform in the back. I'm not going to use steel because steel on an aluminium vehicle or aluminium panels will cause electrolysis over time. I'm not going to use plyboard either because that tends to swell and distort in heat and aluminium's uh, pretty light and it's relatively easy to get so that's, that's sort of the methodology behind that. So that's um, pretty much 99% of the stuff that's going to be going on here. There'll be extra uh, work on it also, but yeah, it's just been really fastidious because, you know, you can always say she'll be right and go, ah, oh, yeah, we'll sort it out down the road, but uh, just from experience, I find that's sort of like making the, the rod to break your own back. So um, that's, that's sort of why I'm being a little bit over the top in regards to going over absolutely everything and anything on this vehicle. Um, one other thing that I'll be looking at doing is upgrading the fuel filtration system. Um, I've inspected and gone over the actual uh, fuel pump on the vehicle itself. Um, I will be looking at potentially fitting a CAV filter on it, um, which is suitable for a carburetor vehicle. And the reason why I talk, uh, mentioned it that is because if you get a fuel filter off a fuel injected vehicle and put it onto a carburetor vehicle, uh, it will work, but you will actually lose a lot of power because the fuel pump on a carburetor vehicle doesn't operate to the same pressure as it does on a fuel injected vehicle. A fuel injected vehicle obviously operates at a much, much finer tolerance, I guess you could say and therefore the actual fuel filter itself is much, much finer. So it's really good if you're wanting to pick up a heap of you know, muck and crud in your fuel, but at the same time, you're not going to get the flow of fuel through, which causes a decrease in power. So um, this one's set up, obviously, as I said, the CAV to work with the carburetor, so that should be fine. And the CAV, oh yeah, got it just here. as you can see is a pretty pretty large filter and obviously I've got a drain or a 
can and should be able to drain it. There you go. Uh, so I can actually drain all the, the muck and the crud just out the bottom of the actual filter itself. And the good thing about this is, <coughs> is I can just wash it out in some methylated spirits or uh, if you haven't got that and you've got heaps of vodka at hand you can use that it's pretty much the same thing, paint thinners and then I can just put it back and off, off I go again so um, I'll probably put that up on the actual uh, firewall like so but we'll see how we go so that's pretty much the series 3 anyway we'll jump over and have a look at the Parenti <coughs> So this is where the Parenti uh, should be. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? They, these actually work. Um, but all jokes aside, uh, it's actually down at uh, Goldfields Off-Road. And they've very kindly come on board to help out with this latest project that we're doing in August of this year, this big trip. And they're actually kitting out the Parenti. So uh, they're going to be doing it tastefully, as I've talked about in the past and they're going to be getting the 24 volt system up and going again and they're just going to be doing a good general thorough overhaul of the vehicle itself because I've had it for about nearly six years now and it's done six years of pretty pretty tough arduous workout bush so you know you, you've got to got to give them a little bit of TLC now and then a little bit of love so anyway um, hopefully you know, it'll be up and running soon. Um, we're just waiting on parts to come in from the UK, which here in Australia, which I mentioned in a previous video, um, there's been a real sort of, I guess, um, not, I wouldn't say shortage, but things are taking a lot longer to be procured in the UK parts wise, not necessarily shipped out to Australia. Um, shipping time from the UK to Australia is about a week, but it's just getting the parts all together actually in the UK to be shipped over here uh, is the problem you know, or that's what I've been told anyway so we'll wait and see but hopefully uh, you know everything comes together and it's ready a couple months before the big trip and I'm sure it will we've also got a interesting comm system actually going into it uh, obviously HF and uh, that'll obviously make it fantastic because then we'll have a HF radio in the Series 3 and we'll have a HF set up in the uh, Parenti. So we'll talk about that obviously later on down the track. The number 5 trailer, we'll be taking that with us also. That's got a little bit of work that needs done to it. Not much really, just a bit of a coat of paint and just tidy up some wiring and uh, that's about it really. So anyway, plenty to do as always and uh, obviously plenty of content coming your way on how to do all this and more and uh, yeah great way to keep yourself out of trouble that's the way to go but look uh, hopefully you're enjoying the content here at Seriously Series very much hope you do I know a lot of you have been really enjoying our servicing your 4x4 series and and for many of you who are sort of starting out uh, in regards to the Land Rover philosophy and the Land Rover doctrine and, or the cult or whatever you want to call it uh, have found it really really useful and that's great to hear if you are enjoying the content here at Seriously Series, please do consider clicking on that Patreon icon at the top right hand corner of your screen. Check us out there, we've got a brand new series starting out on Patreon. It's exclusive only to Patreon. And this is a behind the scenes of what we're calling Seriously Series Dust and Dreams. And this is our big trip coming up in August of this year where we're travelling from the Red Centre down to the Australian Bight. So click on that Patreon icon have a little look around, see what you think. If it's your cup of tea, fantastic. If not, that's okay. And if that's not your cup of tea, as I've said, you can check us out via PayPal on our website at seriouslyseries.com.au. And if you're new to the channel, click on that subscribe button and click on that notification button too. And that way you won't miss out on one single video. Anyway, hope to see you in our next video.